Starting things off like we always do, in at number 10, we have the infamous Suicide Forest. Uh, the forest Logan Paul made famous. It's located northwest of Mount Fuji. There is a 13.5 square miles of thick, lush forest known as the Suicide Forest. This place is unfortunately not known for its beauty, but it's actually known for the second most popular place for suicides in the world. For most people, they walk into the forest with no intentions of ever walking out. As if we follow that rope, we're gonna find something or someone. There's someone in here. And because this forest is so dense, corpses can go undiscovered for years before they are found. This place is so mysterious because a lot of people report that this forest is haunted, and anyone who ventures off the path is in for some serious trouble. Climbing our way in at number nine, we have Sunshine 60, Tokyo's haunted skyscraper. Sunshine 60 is a 60-story skyscraper that was Japan's tallest building from 1978 all the way to 1991. This massive skyscraper was built on land that used to belong to Japan's most infamous prison, and the prison is known as Sagamo Prison. This prison had a really bad reputation. It jailed anarchists, communists, and prisoners of war. After this horrible prison was closed, construction on the building quickly began. They wanted to convert the old prison into a massive office and shopping center, but the architect quickly learned about the urban legends about this building, and they decided to give it a cherry name, a happy name. After the new complex was opened, it didn't take long before people claimed that the skyscraper was haunted. Workers have said that you can hear evil laughter, whispers, and chanting at night. During the day, visitors say that you can feel a sudden burst of cold air, or they will suddenly trip and fall when there's nothing in the way. Number seven, the Georgia guide stones. Nothing like a giant monument paid by a guy who wants to start a new religion. The Georgia Guide Stones are in Elbert County, Georgia, and they're there not to guide you physically, but spiritually. They were thrown up in 1979 and paid for by R.C. Christian, who there is still very little known about to this day. He wanted to erect a giant monument to people with 10 new commandments. New commandments with judo chop action. Some of these new commandments I could get behind. I mean, there's nothing about how you shouldn't bang your neighbor's wife, but maybe back in 1979, he didn't put it up there because it was just something that everyone knew you weren't supposed to do. But some of them are like balance personal rights and social duties, and avoid petty laws and useless officials. But the first commandment is maintain humanity under 500 million in order to have perpetual balance with nature. I'm sorry dude, but we already threw that one out the window. If all you need to start a new religion is some commandments, I'll kick off some right now, some commandments for the Church of Che, like be chill, stay hot, put cheese on it, let's dance, take a nap, backflips are dope, free gym memberships, get wrecked, hit the beach, and Blade 2 was underrated. Number six, the Coral Castle. This one is absolutely bonkers. It's a giant castle made out of limestone that was apparently all built by one man. The castle was built between the years of 1923 and 1951 and is a few miles south of Miami. Some of the slabs that were used to build this mega house were said to have been even heavier than some of the cubes that put the pyramids together. The place was thrown together by a Latvian immigrant named Edward Leedskilini. This dude must have like a 9,000 pound deadlift. He could probably power clean a Jeep Wrangler. However, this Latvian powerhouse said he didn't move the stones by hand, but he had found the secrets to the pyramids. There are even reports of him levitating stones that no man could move. The craziest part about this is he built the castle as a tribute to his fiance who left them on his wedding day. I guess after a breakup you have two options, move on and start a new life, or never get over it and get superpowers. Number five, Skinwalker Ranch. I mean the name alone shows that you probably shouldn't go there. Like where do you want to go, Disneyland? or Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah, I'm gonna choose the one that sounds like it's named after the guy who would make cowboy boots out of campers. Well, Skinwalker Ranch is known for having a ton of supernatural things go down there, from alien sightings to strange lights appearing and disappearing out of nowhere. The place gets its name from a Native American myth of the Skinwalkers, who are people who could transform into any animal. Native Americans have also said that the area is cursed with a dark energy. I honestly think I would be fine there. I think if a skinwalker tried to take my identity, I would just show him how many parking tickets I owe. Number four, Sadova Sanctuary, Trout Lake. Do you like aliens? Well, you better head down to Sadova Sanctuary, as it's been a hotbed for UFO activity for nearly 50 years. 
If you want ET to come down and touch you with that weird little glowy finger, then this is the place for you. It's literally a UFO retreat run by James Gilliland, who is a UFO fanatic. He's founded two different operations dedicated to learning more about aliens, and he's been letting people come up to check out the cool alien view since 1986. Almost everyone who goes up there has some sort of encounter with an alien, whether it's strange lights flying through the sky or actual alien crafts in perfect sight or a soft kiss from a Klingon. Everyone who goes up comes home with some sort of story to tell. Number 3. Earthwork in Newark, Ohio It's super old, it used to be massive and it's definitely a mystery. The Newark earthwork is very strange as many people don't even know what it was used for. Some people believe that ancient Native American tribes could have used it as burial sites or as a church, while some people think that the area was cleared out so they could better map out the stars. This spot is also super old. Some of the older parts are dating back as far as 100 BC. It was also massive, it stretched over 4 square miles. Sadly, encroaching development has destroyed most of it, but there are still a few major structures that stand. I guess if you want to look at the stars now in Newark, you're probably better off googling them. Number 2. Mel's Hole, Manashtash, Washington I would hate to work at this place. All day, you would just hear the same dumb jokes over and over again. How big is Mel's Hole? How deep is Mel's Hole? How many people have come from Mel's Hole? How many people have been inside Mel's Hole? Has anyone ever got lost inside Mel's Hole? Are my hopes and dreams inside Mel's Hole? Well, all the hack jokes aside, this thing is pretty crazy. It's a 9 foot wide bottomless pit. People have tried to reach the bottom in all sorts of ways to no avail. It's even said that the hole has some sort of supernatural power, that if you were to throw a dead animal into it, that it would come back alive. There was one report from the 17th century of a family throwing their deceased dog into the pit and the dog later walked out of the forest completely rejuvenated. How am I just learning about this now? Someone dig up Harambe, we got a gorilla to save. Number 1 on the list is Champy. The Loch Ness Monster thought he was the only creepy dragon creature wandering around open water, but it looks like we've got our own that's made its home in Lake Champlain, which is situated in the French Canadian province of Quebec. That's right, North America has his own version of Loch Ness and he even speaks French, which means he's sexier. Champy got his name from the lake he makes his home in, and like most creatures of his ilk, there is no hard evidence to support the creature's existence. However, there have been several sightings. Over 300 actually. That's more sightings than the rest of NSYNC since Justin Timberlake left. The Iroquois and Abenaki are two Native American tribes from the area, and they both have legends of some sort of snake-like creature living in the lake. Up next, number 8, we have a mysterious 10,000 year old underwater ruins. Off of the southern coast of Uniguni, Japan, there are some really strange ancient ruins. Expert divers and archaeologists have examined the ruins, and they aren't able to come up with any explanation for how these ruins came to be. Some people argue that they are man-made, while others say that they were carved due to natural occurrences. But that doesn't explain what they found. There's a massive arcway of huge stones that fit together perfectly, there are stairways, paved streets, grand staircases, and plazas. Doesn't this concern anyone? They predict that the ruins date back 10,000 years, but yet we have no explanation for how they came to be. This could be evidence of an ancient civilization that got covered by the sea. I mean, how cool would that be? Akasaka Mansion brings us to number 7. This mansion is known as the most haunted place to stay in Tokyo because it has literally been scaring people to death. Well, I don't think I'll be checking into this hotel anytime soon. I think the best western it sounds pretty good to me right now. Guests have said that they've seen ghosts hovering in the hallways and they are followed by a white mist. One girl said that she was dragged across the room by her hair and another man was dragged out of bed to the end of his room with scars on his arms as if like someone like grabbed onto him but no one was there. You would think that a haunted reputation would affect your business but a lot of people from around the world desperately want want to stay in this mysterious hotel. So it's done the opposite, it's attracting people. They want to stay in this mysterious hotel because they want to try to make sense of these weird occurrences. And don't be fooled, this hotel might look nice, but you never know what is lurking in your room 
while you're sleeping. And now at number six, we have Tushin Pond in Tokyo. You never want to go swimming ever again once I'm done telling you guys this story. So during the summer of 1925, a 10 year old boy fell into this pond while playing and his two friends tried to rescue him, but they also drowned and died. It was very mysterious considering that the pond was very calm and they were strong swimmers, so no one knows exactly why they died. But then, people have said that they've seen white hands stretching out of the pond at night trying to drag people underwater. And if you go near this pond, it is also rumored that you can hear the three boys crying for help. So basically, the lesson from this story is never ever go near this pond at night unless you're looking for trouble. A creepy old tunnel travels to number 5. The old Shushretsu tunnel has a reputation for being extremely haunted. People who visited this tunnel say that they can hear voices voices telling them to stop before entering. I don't need creepy voices to tell me not to enter this tunnel. I mean look at that thing, it looks like someone could be lurking in there ready to stab me and I wouldn't make it out alive. If that's not enough to keep you away, there is a huge local legend about someone who got brutally murdered in the tunnel and now they haunt it and try to kill anyone who enters the tunnel. And now people have set up concrete slabs to block off the entrance so no one ventures into the tunnel. Hey, I don't, Brian. Someone came in behind us. No. Someone was behind. We just heard. <gasps> okay, Brian, let's get out. Let's get out. No, Brian, I don't want to do the QA around the corner. We have another creepy tunnel in at number four. The Gridley Tunnel is a very narrow one way tunnel that runs through a hill from Gridley and it goes all the way to Nimitz Boulevard. People who are brave enough to drive through this tunnel have reported seeing a man dressed as a samurai through their rear view mirror. A lot of people have even crashed their cars because this creepy samurai man scares them to death. The most active time to see him is anywhere between midnight and 1 a.m and it has to be on rainy nights for some reason. If anything, I would stay far, far away from this haunted and mysterious tunnel unless you're in the market to crash your car, in which I don't know why anyone would be. According to the legend, the samurai ghost was on his way to get revenge for a death, but he was ambushed and cut down in the tunnel. Because he failed his mission, he is forever stuck in this tunnel. The SSS curve, so that's three S's, swerves its way into number three. This notorious haunted trail is located in Okinawa and it looks like it was taken straight from a horror movie. There are a bunch of rumors that soldiers during World War II died here and they are the reason why strange things happen along this curve. People who walk along this trail have reported being stopped by an evil presence that caused them to have an intense feeling of fear, nausea, dizziness and hallucinations. But things get even worse. In extreme cases, people have reported seeing hands pulling, pushing or punching others. Because of this weird supernatural phenomena, this path is a very popular route for Japanese paranormal investigators. Well, just by looking at this creepy path, I wouldn't step foot on this trail even if someone paid me. Hiroshima brings us to number two. On August 6th, 1945, America dropped an atomic bomb in the city of Hiroshima that killed up to 166,000 people. This horrifying bomb destroyed the city center and wiped out 70,000 people instantly, with thousands of people dying later from radiation poisoning. And now there are really morbid impressions left behind that are caused by the heat of the explosion. So if you were to visit the site today, you will actually see the outline of bodies and objects that absorbed some of the blast. Here's a picture of a person with a walking stick and another person standing next to a ladder. According to the locals, people have said that the souls of the nuclear bomb victims haunted this area. You can hear sad voices, people crying for help, and screams can be heard at twilight. It is also believed that some of these souls lurk in the shadow of the living. The Jomin Tunnel in Hokkaido Gado terrifies us in at number one. This tunnel was opened in 1914 and it is about 507 meters long. It took a lot of manual labor to finish building this tunnel and it is said that construction workers would fall over from exhaustion and their bodies would be buried alive in this tunnel. Don't believe me? Well there are over a hundred human skeletons found in this tunnel and many people who travel through it have said that they've seen human figures and heard creepy voices. People regularly get into accidents here and for some reason, they even go on to commit suicide shortly after driving through it. So if you're curious and want to drive through this tunnel, do it at your own risk. Number 10, Racetrack Playa, Death Valley. This place is famous for its sailing stones, big rocks that move when no one's looking. Ooh, people know they have moved because they leave a track behind them, but no one has ever seen them move. Oh, mysterious. 
We should send in Scoob and the gang and figure out what's going on with this one. The winds in this area reach up to 90 miles per hour, so it could be the reason that the rocks are sailing across the ground. But my theory is gnomes that are living inside the rocks and move the rocks around like Flintstone cars so you don't see any footprints. Either way, I'm sure someone could crack the code on this mystery with a GoPro setup and a little bit of time lapse to debunk this whole gnome theory, but please don't because I want to believe gnomes live in rocks. Number 9. Mount Shasta, Redding, California Mount Shasta has been a major hub for all sorts of spiritual people, from Buddhist monks to white girls with dreadlocks who have crystals who call themselves bumbleweed. It's said to be one of the world's cosmic power spots. What does that mean? I have no idea. Do I look like someone who knows what a cosmic power spot is? I think it means if you hang out there for a long enough time you get some sort of superpowers or something. The Native Americans believe that it connects to the above spirit world, so I'm guessing it's some sort of heaven like spot. There's also been reports of UFO sightings and strange energy readings. Maybe it's a huge gas leak and everyone who goes there is just getting super high. Number 8. The Organ Vortex this one is crazy. It seems like some sort of supernatural anomaly or magnetic energy powerhouse. The Oregon Vortex used to be used as a mining facility and now is home to some of the strangest happenings. Many people who enter immediately feel vertigo. There's videos of balls rolling uphill, sticks and brooms that stand on their own when left in places where they should fall over. The people around you will seem to shrink and grow before your very eyes. This sounds like one of those places where I would sit on the outer rim just looking in and eating a sandwich and yelling, hey, how's it going in there? A couple more fun facts about this anomaly is that local Native American tribes call it the forbidden place and animals refuse to enter it. Yeah, I think that settles it. Me and Toto are gonna chill on the outside enjoying some expensive cold cuts while you guys dive into the gates of hell. Starting off this countdown, we have Hoya Bashu Forest. This Romanian forest is a nice place to visit and it's quite popular. They have bike trails, hiking paths, and even archery ranges. Sounds really nice, right? Well, maybe. But this forest is also known as the creepiest forest in the world. Apparently a number of UFOs have been spotted in this area. In 1968, a military technician named Emil Barnea claimed he got proof of a UFO in the clearing. People thought he just made this up, but as The Independent said, and I quote, what differentiates this story from other UFO claims is that Barnea had nothing to gain from reporting the sighting and everything to lose. The communist government equated a belief in the paranormal with madness and state sabotage. Barnea lost his job in a country which had no support for the sect. So it seems silly for him to just make this up, meaning he probably didn't make it up and he actually saw this UFO. To this day, people have claimed to see floating orbs of light. Some even say they have heard weird voices coming from the woods and have seen apparitions. Gets even creepier because apparently sometimes electronic devices fail in the forest, and photos taken there have sometimes revealed creepy figures in the background. And of course, there are stories of people vanishing in the forest, only to reappear years later having no memory of what happened to them during those years. So could it be that this forest is haunted by the paranormal? Coming in at number 9 we have Loch Ness, Scotland. This is the lake famous for the sighting of the Loch Ness Monster, aka Nessie, which is one of the reasons as to why this place is so mysterious. So it's a large deep freshwater lake in the Scottish Highlands. Over the years, a number of people have claimed to see Nessie lurking in the waters. And of course, there's that famous photo that someone captured of Nessie. Reports of this monster date back to ancient times. Drawings were found carved in stones in the area that depict a weird monster with flippers. Then in 565 AD, the first written account of Nessie appeared. Apparently, a man was swimming in the lake when he was bit by the monster. Then in 1933, sightings of the Loch Ness monster increased. One account was from a couple that saw it. They claimed it to be a dragon or prehistoric monster. So who knows what's really going on in that lake? Maybe it is Nessie's home and that it is the sole survivor of the long extinct Plesiosaurus. Moving on to number 8 we have the Devil's Sea. About 100 kilometers south of Tokyo there's a spot known as the Devil's Sea or Dragon's Triangle. Basically it is said to be the Pacific's very own Bermuda Triangle. 
number of ships and planes have disappeared in this area. In fact, one time, nine American ships went missing in that area in perfect weather. To this day, they haven't been found, and we literally don't know what happened to them. Due to this reason, it is considered one of the most dangerous marine locations around the world. Now, it was also given the name Dragon's Triangle due to the urban legend of dragons living off of the coast of Japan near there. In 1952, the Japanese government sent 31 individuals to go investigate this area. The whole team disappeared without a trace. Their bodies never found. As a result, some people believe this area is a gate to a parallel universe or that aliens have something to do with it. To this day, we still really don't know. In our seventh spot, we have Marfa, Texas. Marfa, Texas is famously known for something they call the Marfa Lights. Basically, it's these weird bright lights that appear at night outside the town of Marfa in West Texas. And no, it's not just stars that they're seeing. They have been described as bright, colorful orbs about the size of basketballs. They can glow white, blue, yellow, or red. Unlike stars, these lights can move up and down, disappear, reappear, and even split into two. Apparently, even actor James Dean saw these lights while filming the movie Giant. But no one knows what they really are. But of course, they're rumored to be UFOs, ghosts, or even fairies. Coming in at number six, we have Stonehenge. Located in Wiltshire, England, the Stonehenge is one of the UK's most famous landmarks. It consists of a bunch of standing stones in a ring, with some stones placed on top of each other. In fact, it's considered the UK's most mysterious site. First off, we don't know how people managed to build these huge structures like 5,000 plus years ago when they didn't have any construction machinery. Like the stones themselves weigh around 25 tons. There's no way they were just lugging those around themselves. Theory goes that they were somehow dragging the rocks though by having them lubricated in pig fat. Again, we still don't know. Not only that, but we don't know why they were built in the first place. Many scholars agree that Stonehenge was once a burial ground. Others believe it might have been a place of worship, but again, we don't know. And count how many times I said that in this video. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Coral Castle. This is a beautiful rock garden that I personally would love to see one day. Located in Homestead, Florida, this garden was created by one man and one man only, which many people find hard to believe. The garden is made up of more than a thousand tons of sedimentary rock, which was then sculpted into different shapes like a crescent moon. Some were even made into chairs and tables. Legend goes that this man built the structure after being abandoned by his lover on their wedding day. Uh -huh. He channeled his heartache into building this structure to prove to her that he could do something amazing. I'm telling you, it's amazing what a bad breakup can do to a person. Here's the thing though. This man was very tiny. He weighed only 100 pounds and he only had a fourth grade education. So people are wondering how he managed to build such an intricate structure by himself. Scientists claim that even Albert Einstein couldn't have done it. Aliens! <laughs> in our fourth spot today, we have New Grange. Located in Ireland, this is said to be the oldest and most famous prehistoric site in all of Ireland. Built around 3100 BC, New Grange is a round structure made out of wood, clay, and stone. The roof is covered in grass. Inside, the structure is a long passage that leads to a cross-shaped chamber. This is said to have been a tomb. Now, a lot of thought and detail went into building this. It's completely waterproof still to this day. And the entrance of the tomb was positioned in a way so that during the winter solstice, the sun would be in through the opening and down the passageway, which was the perfect light source. Now, what we need to know is who was this tomb built for and why? Whoever it was for, they had to have been pretty significant. In our third spot, we have the Michigan Triangle. The Michigan Triangle is Lake Michigan's very own Bermuda Triangle. Just like the Bermuda Triangle, this area in Lake Michigan has been associated with a number of disappearances. Apparently, a lot of ships have sunk in that area and planes have crashed. Even entire crews have gone missing from their boats. The first incident can be dated back to the 17th century, when ships were out exploring new routes for trade. In 1679, a ship named Le Griffin was out sailing to find a northwest passage to China and Japan. Everything was going fine until they reached the Michigan Triangle. From there, they disappeared without a trace. The scariest part? No bodies or shipwreck has ever been found. 
It's literally like these people disappear into thin air. Moving on to number two, we have the Plane of Jars. Located in Laos, the Plain of Jars is considered one of the most mysterious archaeological sites in the world. The area is filled with 2,000 large ancient stone jars. They are approximately 10 feet tall and weigh several tons. To this day, their origins are unknown. Now everyone has a lot of questions. Number one, how did they make these big jars? Slash, how did they make that many? And two, what were they used for? A recent theory suggests that the jars were used for the dead. Basically, a dead body was placed in there to then be exposed to the elements. Then, when only their bones were left, they would take them and bury them. But again, we still don't know for sure. And in our number one spot today, we have Roswell, New Mexico. Of course, this place is associated with UFOs and aliens. Apparently, in 1947, a UFO crashed there. A ranch worker claimed he found debris from the crash. Later, it was collected by the military and they were like, oh yeah, that, that's just, that's just part of a weather balloon. Lies, no one believed that. We all know they were covering up the fact that it was part of a UFO. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Pine Gap. Pine Gap is a highly secretive Australian intelligence facility located in the remote desert of the Northern Territory, approximately 20 kilometers southwest of Alice Springs. The facility is jointly operated by the Australian government and the United States government's Central Intelligence Agency, better known as the CIA. It is believed that Pine Gap is primarily used for the interception of signals intelligence, including satellite imagery and communication communications from various locations around the world, but at this point in time, no one is really sure. That is because Pine Gap has long been shrouded in secrecy and its operations have been the subject of much speculation and controversy. There have been allegations of illegal activities taking place at the facility, including surveillance of Australian citizens and involvement in controversial US military operations. Despite this, the Australian and US governments have consistently denied any wrongdoings and little is known about the true nature of the activities taking place at Pine Gap. The facility remains one of the most mysterious and secretive military installations in the world. Number 9. Door to Hell Yep, you heard that right. Door to Hell. Many people believe this giant crater in Turkmenistan is a gateway to hell, and I can't say that I really disagree. It's essentially a 230 foot wide pit with glowing red flames and is surrounded by miles of sand. It's said that this place is a natural gas field that collapsed in 1971. To contain the spread of the methane gas, geologists set it on fire and it has been continuously burning ever since. Now, many cultures and philosophies around the world believe in the existence of the underworld, and while there are many places believed to be gateways to the underworld, the door to hell might just be the closest resemblance to this place. To this day, the crater is still burning and no one really knows why. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Yamantau Mountain Complex. The Yamantau Mountain Complex is a highly secretive and heavily guarded underground facility located in the Ural Mountains of Russia. Its purpose and functions are shrouded in mystery, and the Russian government has actually never officially acknowledged its existence. It is believed to have been built during the Cold War as a nuclear weapons storage facility and command center. There is an above-ground town called Mezgor, and that town is super secret and off-limits, so much so that people aren't even allowed within the vicinity. And this is all all thought to be because this town might be holding the complex underneath it. The underground complex is said to cover an area of over 400 square miles with many tunnels and underground facilities. Its exact purpose and current use remain unknown with various theories and speculations ranging from a bunker for the Russian government and military leaders to a storage facility for advanced weapons and technology. Some have even speculated that it could be used as a launch site for missiles or a secret laboratory for biological weapons research. Despite many attempts by outsiders to uncover the truth about the Yamantau mountain complex, the Russian government has remained tight-lipped and maintains strict security measures around the area. Number 7. Queen Mary Queen Mary is a retired British ocean liner that sailed from 1936 to 1967. The city of Long Beach bought the ship to serve as a tourist attraction featuring restaurants, a museum, and a hotel, but claims were made that the ship was haunted. Apparently, there are resident spirits including 
Jackie, the little girl who haunts the first class pool, John Petter, who was crushed by a watertight door, and the cook, who was baked alive by his own kitchen staff during World War II. But arguably the most notorious location on the ship for paranormal activity is stateroom B340. Reports claim someone was knocking on the door in the middle of the night, bathroom lights turned on by themselves, the sink faucet turning off and on on its own, and unexplained bathroom doors shutting. Some guests have even reported the covers of their bed being pulled off while asleep and waking to see a dark figure standing at the foot of the bed. Now, why is it so haunted and seems to be cursed? No one really knows. But if you dare to spend a night there, I'm sure you'll run into something truly terrifying. In our number six spot today, we have Porton Down. Porton Down is located in Wiltshire, England. Hopefully I said that right. I never know. And it is a government research facility. This place was first created in 1916 during World War I, and it was initially built as a testing ground for chemical weapons. Since then, however, it has become one of the UK's leading research centers for defense and security. Here's where things get pretty mysterious, though. The site is surrounded by high security fencing and is very strictly patrolled by armed guards. Of course, what they are doing inside of this facility is highly, highly classified. Porton Down has been the site of several controversial incidents over the years, including the accidental exposure of military personnel to chemical agents during experiments. The facility has also been accused of testing chemical weapons on unsuspecting civilians in nearby areas. In addition, there have been allegations of unethical animal testing practices and human experiments conducted at the facility. Today, the facility continues to conduct research in areas such as disease control, but many of their operations remain a total mystery. Number 5. Okigahara Forest The Okigahara Forest, aka the forest in Japan where people take their lives, is just as terrifying as it is tragic. In front of the entrance of the forest reads, Think carefully about your children, your family, and your life is a precious gift from your parents. Every year, hundreds of people go here to end their lives, and the number of deaths here can be estimated from the data collected by the local police through the annual campaign. But how many corpses are recovered annually from here is an never disclosed. Why people come and end their lives here is still a mystery, but according to an ancient legend, once in Japan when people were unable to maintain themselves, they were left in this forest where they all died of starvation. It's believed that the ghosts of these dead people hunt for a new soul daily. It's also said that the mournful spirits of those who took their own lives still linger in the woods. Folklore claims they are vengeful, dedicated to tormenting visitors, and luring those who are sad and lost off the paths. Japanese astrologers also believe that the reason for the deaths in the forest is due to the power of the strange forces living on the trees, which carry out such incidents. So why so many people feel the need to end their lives there will never be known, and it's such a tragedy. In our number four spot today, we have the Raven Rock Mountain Complex. The Raven Rock Mountain Complex is a highly secure military installation located in Pennsylvania in the United States, and it is often referred to as the quote, underground pentagon. The facility, also known as as Site R was built during the Cold War as a backup command center for the Pentagon and was designed to ensure continuity of government operations in case of a nuclear attack. The complex is located inside of a mountain and has a vast network of underground tunnels, facilities, and backup power systems to keep the facility running in case of a disaster, and it is even equipped with communication systems, medical facilities, and living quarters to support personnel in the event of an emergency. Basically, it is everything someone would need in the event of the absolute worst case scenario. Although the site was built for the tense times of the Cold War, it is still in use today, but the functions and capabilities of the site remain classified. We know it serves as a critical facility for the US government and military, and that it has been activated as recently as during the 2020 crisis. Number three, the Alaska Triangle. You've probably heard of the Bermuda Triangle, but have you ever heard of the Alaska Triangle? Probably not. So so let me tell you about it. It's a remote area infamous for alien abductions, Bigfoot sightings, paranormal phenomena, and vanishing airplanes. So yeah, the Alaska Triangle has everything the Bermuda Triangle has, but with more mountains and it's cold. Like much of Alaska, the Triangle contains some of the most rugged, unforgiving wilderness in North America. It's an impossibly vast expanse of dense forests, craggy mountain peaks, alpine lakes, and large swaths of plain old wilderness. With all this, it's no shock that people 
people go missing. What is surprising, however, is the sheer number of people who go missing. Add to that the fact that many disappear without a shred of evidence, and bodies, dead or alive, are rarely found. More than 16,000 people, including airplane passengers, hikers, locals, and tourists, have disappeared within the Alaska Triangle since 1988. The rate per 1,000 people is more than twice the national missing persons average, and the rate of people who are never found is even higher. The numbers don't lie, and they imply that something else is going on here other than people merely getting lost in the mountains. So what's really going on here? Seems like no one knows, and I do not want to be the one to find out. In our number two spot today, we have the Dugway Proving Ground. The Dugway Proving Ground is a highly secretive and heavily guarded military installation located in the Great Salt Lake Desert of Utah in the United States. It was established in 1942, and it covers an area of 798,214 acres, making it one of the largest military testing facilities in the entire world. The facility is primarily used for the testing and development of chemical and biological weapons, as well as for research and the development of various defense technologies. The Dugway Proving Ground is surrounded by a fence, and access is heavily restricted. The facility has been the subject of much speculation and conspiracy theories, with rumors of secret experiments and cover-ups. In 1968, an accidental release of the VX nerve agent killed thousands of sheep in the nearby Skull Valley, leading to widespread concern and criticism of the facility. Despite its controversial past, however, the Dugway Proving Ground remains an essential part of the United States national security infrastructure, and its operations continue to be shrouded in secrecy. And coming in at number one is North Korea. Yes, North Korea as a whole is just plain terrifying as well as mysterious. Little is known about the country due to their dictator Kim Jong-un's rule. They have many secret missile bases, and they have some nuclear facilities that are a little sus to say the least. Kim is also very strict with his people, and they can't access the internet, and if they do, it can only be government approved sites. The same goes with film and TV. The citizens are also treated horribly there. There's hardly any food and everyone is weak and hungry, and it's even been said that the streets are lined with dead bodies. They also have very strict laws that result in people being executed or sent to prison camps, which are one of the worst forms of torment. Based on the guilty by association principle, they are often imprisoned together with the whole family, including children and the elderly, and including any children born in the camp. A former guard likened the prisoners to walking skeletons, dwarfs, and cripples in rags. He estimated that about 30% of prisoners had deformities such as torn off ears, smashed eyes, crooked noses, and faces covered with cuts and scars resulting from beatings and other mistreatments, and that these people were still forced to work. They had to do hard physical labor in agriculture, mining, and inside factories from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m., followed by ideological re-education and self-criticism sessions. The prisoners are forced to sleep in a room with 80 to 90 people in 30 square meter flea infested rooms, are only occasionally allowed to use the toilet, one for about 300 people, and may only take a shower after several months. No one should have to live like that, and it's horrible. And that's the stuff we do know. Kim is so secretive, I fear that we don't know the true horrors of what goes on in North Korea. Coming in at number 10, we have Audley's Town. Historians are baffled by the lost county down Irish village of Audley's Town. The town was run by landowner, the then Lord of the Land, Viscount Bangor, who lived in the town's manor, Castlewood. When he died, his wife remarried and evicted all of the townsfolk. She then sent them off on a boat called the Rose, and they were told to set sail to Boston. The Rose left in 1852, but the boat never arrived in the New World. Some say that Lady Bangor's new husband, Major Savage Nugent, hated the town folk and had them killed. These days, the town is covered over by woodland, and part of the disappeared town was used as the setting for Game of Thrones. Coming into number nine, we have the trenches. This is so sad. During World War One, Europe kind of lost it. I say kind of, like it literally did. Countries turned on one another and fought a bloody battle to the death. On one side was Great Britain, France, Russia, Italy, Canada, and eventually Japan and the United States. On the other was Germany, Austro-Hungary, Bulgaria, and the Ottoman Empire. From October 1914 to March 1918, neither side made much ground and were stuck in a deadlock battle fought in trenches along the western front of France. It is thought that the total length of the trenches was around 2,490 kilometers. Not only did millions of people die in the trenches, they lived in them too. They were forced to live in squalid conditions. Millions and millions of men. For all intent and purpose, these long thin trenches were towns. Then, 
as the war was over, the trenches were abandoned, leaving a history of bloodshed and violence in the ground. This is what they looked like over a hundred years ago, and now this is what they look like today. This is the battlefield from Beaumont Hamel in France, a notable fighting spot in the Battle of the Somme. Haunting. Coming into number 8 is Calico. Here is a picture of me at Calico Ghost Town in California. I stumbled across the place on Christmas Eve Eve in 2017. It was a very interesting time of life for me then, and coming across a ghost town seemed to kind of fit with that weird and intense era. So Calico was an old silver mining town in the San Bernardino mountain range. The town was a flash in the pan of the Silver Rush era and was abandoned in 1907 with a brief return in 1915 when a cyanide plant was built to try and restore economic fortune. Sadly for Calico, it was to no avail. The town is undoubtedly mysterious and spooky up in the mountains and in the middle of the desert, which is pretty remote. It is also said that the town is haunted by not one but five ghosts. There's a little girl ghost who only appears to children. There's also a ghost named Tumbleweed Harris, the lady in a white gown who wanders the outskirts of town, an angry cowboy, and the ghost of a dog named Dorsey. Coming into number seven, we have the Library of Alexandria. Alexandria is a coastal city in Egypt, sitting at the south of the Mediterranean Sea. The city dates back to 331 BC and was once the thriving capital of Egypt, but was reduced to nothing more than a small fishing village in the late Ottoman period. Brutal ransackings and an earthquake destroyed a lot of the original ancient landmarks, including the Alexandria Lighthouse and Cleopatra's tomb, which has notably never been found. Most notably, however, was the biggest loss suffered by the city, the destruction of the Library of Alexandra. Now, this was a massive library, so big that it was hailed as the most significant in the ancient world. It was said to contain the equivalent of 100,000 books, which in the early days of the written word was a lot. It's uncertain who destroyed the library, just that it's no longer there. Julius Caesar's been blamed, but so have many people who ransacked the city over its history. Moreover, while the city has been discussed a lot in literature, we don't know for sure if it ever really existed. Alexandria as a city was rebuilt eventually, and a city of the same name stands in its place, but the original landmark is by and large lost to the ground in the ocean, taking many of the secrets of the ancient world with it. Another ancient one up for you next, at number 6 we have the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Now, the Gardens of Babylon were one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. They've been described as some of the most fantastical roof gardens of all time and were thought to have been located in Babylonia in Iraq. The gardens were believed to have been destroyed sometime after the first century AD, and many archaeologists have spent their lives looking for their remains. The existence is not confirmed by archaeological findings, and there have been suggestions that the gardens are mythical. That being said, they were thought to be in Iraq and much of the country has been super ravaged by war over the years. Ok, I have to deviate from this video for a second to ask if anyone else remembers the Hanging Gardens of Babylon in Bill and Ted, because I absolutely swear that there was a Babylon bit but I can't find it anywhere online, and rather like the gardens themselves I'm thinking are they mythical, or is this like a Mandela effect thing that I've just discovered? Let me know! Coming into number 5, we have Tynum. Tynum in England is a pretty spooky village indeed. The ghost village in South Dorset was abandoned in 1943 at the height of World War II. It was abandoned for fear of bombardment from the German forces. 225 villagers were rehomed, all of which thought that they would return after the war, but mysteriously, the British government purchased the land and kept it for military training. The village is now opened at various times of the year for controlled tourism, but those who have been lucky enough to visit claim that it's very spooky indeed. In fact, some even claim that the village telephone rings even though it's disconnected from wires. The village was featured in a television show, Mysteries of the Abandoned, and this is what was said by visitors. The village pond looks like any other village pond in England, except there's no wildlife there. There are no ducks. It's eerily empty. Shut the front door! No ducks on the pond! Must be cursed, right? I have to say that the documentary is super dramatic and I kind of love it. They claim that it's eerie and that the church remains as it was in the 40s. Have a listen to this. I'm very, very here for the dramatic music. At a darker narrative. Like the cottages which are little more than empty shells. And these are in an unusual state of disrepair. Where are the ducks? Questions. Coming in at number four, we have the lost villages of the St. Lawrence. 
Controversially, in 1958, nine villages were flooded along the St. Lawrence River in Canada. Now, this was to make way for the St. Lawrence Seaway. The project was unpopular as 6,500 people were displaced, and of those people, the residents believed that the money that they got for their homes wasn't enough because the plans had already depressed property value. The villages were all in Ontario and are now under the water in the St. Lawrence River. Some of the areas are now popular scuba diving spots. Eerily, though, it is possible to spot the outlines of the villages from the water when levels are low. Another sunken city at number 3, we have the withered city of Villa Epicuan. Villa Epicuan was a popular tourist resort near Buenos Aires, Argentina, but unfortunately it flooded in 1985, which meant that hopes and livelihoods had to be abandoned in the water. Can you imagine? Disappearing into the water, Villa Epicuan became a sunken town. However, Weirdly, the waters began to recede in 2009, and now, after a drought, you can see more of the town emerging from the water than ever. 25 years after it disappeared, it began to reemerge, only this time it was totally white, stripped of paint. The trees have died after their time underwater and away from the sun, and now they're white too, and the whole thing just looks ghostly and twisted and withered. Rusted cars and dislodged bathtubs litter the bank. Honestly, it looks so scary to me, but I also kind of love it. This town or city, more like, still exists, but may not in our lifetime, so I want to give you a little warning at number two. We have Venice. Venice is sinking. The historic town is made from 118 small islands connected by bridges and dates back to the 10th century BCE. The issue is here climate change and tourism. Cruise ships are turning up in the harbour, which disturbs the waters. Thousands of passengers disembark from the ships and trample the city, rarely without buying anything and contributing to the economy that could actually help save the city. The old buildings of Venice don't have stable foundations and they're gradually subsiding into the waters of the lagoon. Marry that with tourism and overcrowding and the rise in ocean levels in general, and it seems very much on the brink. It would be devastating to lose this city. Finally, coming into number one, we have Happy Valley. Happy Valley is not a happy place to be. The town used to be known as Williamstown and is located between Syracuse and Camden in upstate New York. Founded in 1850, the town was a farming community, but it was abandoned in the Great Depression. That being said, the Depression probably wasn't the reason people left if the rumours are to be believed anyway. It is said that the men of Williamstown angered a witch that lived on the fringes of the community. How they angered her? Well, some say they taunted her, others say they abused her. Either way, in a fit of rage, the town was suddenly struck with plague that killed a whole chunk of the population. On top of that, crops began failing. Today, those in surviving towns near Happy Valley claim that actually it is haunted and they will not venture into the abandoned spot. Coming in at number 10, we have the unreachable town of Urkhammer. Is this a true story? If so, well, I'm scared. It seems like there did indeed used to be a town by the name of Urkhammer in Iowa in the early 1900s. It was a farming town with a relatively small population. However, it was noted in the mid 1900s that it had been entirely abandoned and nobody knows why. That isn't even the scary bit either. There is a worrying story associated with the town. Whether or not it's true or false, I simply don't know, but well, have a listen. A tourist passed through the town in the early 1950s and bought some gas at a gas station. As he drove out of town, he realised his gas star was still on empty. Sure enough, he'd been ripped off. He turned around to confront the station workers, but he never seemed to reach the town. He was sure that he'd only been driving for five minutes, but after turning around for ten minutes, he actually never made it back. Soon he ran out of gas and decided to continue back into town on foot. It was his only option, really. Didn't have any gas. He kept walking and saw the town in the distance, but he could never reach it. Eventually, he was picked up by a passing car who said that they had not driven through a town for hours. Weird. Coming in at number nine, we have Luto Catuto. Sounds fake. In March 2018, a major landslide led to the destruction of over 100 houses, wiping away the small town of Luto Catuto overnight. Have a look at the damage. The 
landslide has led to Luto Catuto being dubbed the town that the earth swallowed and it's easy to see why. Now the cracks began appearing around 10 years before the major landslide in March 2018 but the government simply told the town residents to fill it with dirt. Town resident Giorgio Abeja spoke to the press and said that a loud noise woke him up in the night. The town was sinking. Luckily he was able to escape with his life. The town should never have been built on the clay ground as it was always vulnerable to landslides. Sadly 106 families were displaced as a result of the sinking. Another town swallowed whole at number 8, we have Bayou Corny. The controversial case of Bayou Corny sinkhole has been settled with the Texas brine company at fault. In 2012 the town of Bayou Corny was evacuated when bubbles began rising in nearby water and there was increased seismic activity in the earth. Tim Murphy, a journalist for The Atlantic, said that Bayou Corny is the biggest ongoing industrial disaster in the United States that you haven't heard of. For some reason, nobody really talks about it. 350 residents have been turfed out of their home because their town is sinking before their very eyes. The disappearance of this town led to it being dubbed as Demon Alley. Coming into number 7, we have the New City Complex. The New City Complex was built in West Milford, New Jersey. The town was located along Route 32 and was built by the city of Newark water and reservoir plant in order to provide housing for plant workers. Located along Route 23, the town is now entirely abandoned and nobody knows why, although of course there are theories. It is said that the town pretty much dissolved overnight in 1992. Rumour has it that the seeming exodus happened after a dodgy person moved to the town in the late 1980s. Others say that the town was never a town at all, just a set of a movie which has been left to crumble. So is it an inexplicably abandoned town or an urban legend? Coming into number 6 we have the Roanoke. What happened to the people of Roanoke? It is a question still baffling us 430 years later as it seems that not one but two occasions the town actually totally disappeared. Twice! Let me start from the beginning. In 1585, a small group of settlers made Roanoke Island off the coast of North Carolina their home, although many left when they found the conditions to be unsatisfactory. In 1587, 115 English settlers came to join those who had left, but weirdly they found no one. Like, absolutely no one. Weirdly though, they didn't seem to be too disturbed by that, assuming they must have just upped and left because they didn't like it. At the time, the colony decided to send their governor, a John White, back to England to gather fresh supplies and fresh settlers to to expand the colony. He went back and then three years later he returned with his supplies to the colony. He'd left his wife and daughter there, he was expecting a big reunion. But once again he found no traces of the inhabitants, just like the time the settlers had arrived, only this time he knew something was wrong because his family wouldn't have upped and left without telling him. The only clue he found was the word Croatoan carved into a wooden post, which is extremely strange. So where did the settlers of the Roanoke go? They were absolutely never seen again. Now some theorists say that they were killed by a Native American tribe, although the fact that there was no trace of their bodies is absolutely suspicious. Others say that they decided to sail back to England for some reason or another but got lost at sea, but again, I'm saying this town disappeared twice so there really has to be something else going on. Coming into number 5 we have Christmas Arizona. I love a good abandoned town, I really do. I went to Calico in California back in December 2017 and it was so interesting and spooky, but now I really want to visit this town even more. Meet the lost town of Santa Claus in Arizona. Santa Claus! The town was so popular with Christmas lovers despite its untraditional setting in the desert. The town was founded in 1937 and created as a Christmas resort, just you know, cause. A Swiss chalet, and no I don't mean the chicken place, a Swiss themed house is what I mean, and plenty of Christmas trees, a life sized dollhouse, a Christmas themed inn, basically kids could sit on Santa's lap all year round and they loved it. Until they didn't. Just stop being a town. It's now abandoned by the side of the road. Instead of Christmas pies and elves, all you'll find these days are rattlesnakes and while I love the sound of this, at the same time I feel like it would have sucked for the employees. I once worked as an elf in a toy store and I felt like I had too much Christmas so the actual day was a bit of a letdown so imagine that being all year. 
To be honest, I'm actually thinking maybe Santa Claus in Arizona is better off disappeared. Coming into number four, we have Petra. Petra is located in southern Jordan in the Middle East and was settled in the early 9000 BCE. By the 4th century BCE, it was the capital of the Nabataean Kingdom. Petra was carved into the rock, but after the Roman Empire took over the city, it started to disappear. At first, the population diminished in around the 7th and 8th centuries. Then the city became abandoned for centuries, with very little footfall due to its remote location. Petra lay forgotten and all but disappeared as a result of natural disasters and neglect. It was off the map for a very long time until Swiss explorers rediscovered the city in 1812. As stories dribbled back to Europe of a lost town, intrigue grew. Local folklore claimed that the city has been created by the Wand of Moses having actually lost touch with the actual history of the forgotten city. In 1929, archaeologists led an excavation of the city. In 2016, even more of the city was discovered buried in the sands. Coming into number three, we have the cities of the Amazon. When the dastardly colonists invaded swathes of the world, they brought back stories when they returned to their homelands. The Spanish returned home to regale stories of vast cities made of gold and filled with treasure along the Amazon. Some called it the City of Zed other called it El Dorado. This led hungry explorers to seek out the cities, only when they got there, they never found them. Ever, all they found was thick jungle. The golden cities the early pioneers had spoken of became nothing but myth and legend, that was until recently. In 2010, aerial images taken by National Geographic revealed earthworks spanning 155 miles in the Amazon. As Amazonian rainforests have been cleared for agriculture, further evidence of ancient pre Columbian movements have been found. So, speaking of this somewhat mythical, we have Atlantis at number two. So, bearing in mind that a lot of people believe that the Amazonian cities were a myth, but now it's looking like they may well have been legit. What do we think the deal with Atlantis is? It's enduring, I'll say that. Atlantis is a legendary city that is mentioned in a number of pieces of ancient Greek literature, including by the late great philosopher Plato. It is said that Atlantis was a thriving city filled with affluence and positivity. That was until it sank. Atlantis was said to have sunk in the sea in a single day and night. There's been a lot of speculation as to where that city may be. People have searched the Straits of Gibraltar between Africa and Spain and found nothing as of yet. If Atlantis was real, it would be over 11,000 years old, according to our calculations. I actually do kind of have a feeling that we may one day find this lost city. Finally, coming into number one, we have Langville, Montana. This is actually utterly creepy, it really has freaked me out. I was doing some heavy research into disappeared places and towns and spaces, and Google Autocomplete kept suggesting Langville, Montana disappearance. Now, it would appear at the bottom in related searches too, as would Langville, Montana incident or Langville, Montana turned inside out, which is some Stranger Things stuff if I've ever heard of it. Oddly, when I clicked the link or even searched it up in the search bar, the internet yielded absolutely no information not a sausage. To me, this makes things even weirder, right? Why am I being suggested a mystery town when there's no evidence of it? I'm thinking that not only did this town disappear, but its data was also expunged from the internet. Why? I love a good cover up theory and let me make it even better with some investigative journalism. Here is the Google trend page for Langville, Montana disappeared. As you can see, it was actually frequently searched for in July and August 2018, then a few times after. Here I've compared it to searches for me, my name. I'm not saying people Google me a lot, but I am a real person on a channel with a lot of subscribers, so it does happen. So there was a time when Langville, Montana was being Googled loads, like super loads. Again, I'm just saying, why is there no record if people are Googling? It. Starting off this countdown, we have Castle Black. Now, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, you might be like, whoa, Castle Black, is it named after the headquarters in the show? Well, it actually might be. This base, however, is very different. Basically, Castle Black is an American military base located in Syria. Sadly, it's not a castle at all, so the name is deceiving. But anyways, this base is for special forces operations. In fact, we only found out about it recently, after it was mentioned in documents obtained by The Intercept via the Freedom Information Act. What goes down in there is largely unknown. I actually think it's quite clever to name it after a fictional place from a very popular TV show. Because when I searched it, the first page of sites are all about Game of Thrones. So 
in a way, it's hidden on the web. Moving on to number nine, we have Bohemian Grove. What happens at the Grove stays at the Grove. I feel like that's the motto they go by. The Bohemian Club is this group of rich men who meet in the Bohemian Grove in California every July. Among the attendees are past and present presidents, government members, and business leaders. What goes on there is really unknown. Some say it's like a cult. And rumor has it that they perform live sacrifices there. I don't know if it's humans or animals, but that's a no from me. In 2000, Texas-based filmmaker Alex Jones and his cameraman snuck into the camp and filmed this ceremony called the Cremation of the Care. Sounds creepy and looks creepy. He caught a bunch of individuals wearing cloaks standing over a large fire doing this weird ritual. What these individuals of high power do there is a big mystery. All we know is that they're up to no good. In our eighth spot, we have Area 6. This is a top secret base that we don't know too much about. In fact, it was only discovered in 2016. Someone was on Google Earth when they spotted this weird air base in the Nevada desert. It was unnamed on Google Earth. Obviously, the government didn't want us to find it, but too late for that. After that, it was confirmed that this was a government base. This base is about 12 miles northeast of Area 51. Apparently in 1945 to 1995, over 1,000 nuclear tests were conducted there. It's also believed to be a site used to test military drones. I mean, you can try researching all about Area 6, but not a lot will come up. That's how secretive this place is. And no matter what online articles say about this place, we will never truly know what goes on behind those closed doors. In our seventh spot today, we have Pine Gap, Australia. Located deep in the Australian outback is Pine Gap, another top secret military base. In fact, this base has been named Australia's Area 51. So this place is used by Australia and the US government and is a satellite surveillance base. The NSA uses the facility to collect internet and telephone records. We found this out back in 2013 when Edward Snowden revealed some highly classified info on the NSA and how they're spying on everyone. However, conspiracy theorists believe that this base is home to one of the most terrifying surveillance systems out there, the Echelon. We don't know for sure though, and we might never know. Moving on to number six, we have S4. Area 51 might not be home to aliens slash UFOs anymore. That's right, you heard me. So theory goes that Area 51 has moved their alien life to a new nearby base. S4. They did this because, hello, everyone believes that Area 51 has aliens and UFOs. And if it's true, they don't want anyone knowing where they're being kept. So this theory surfaced after a lot of strange activity started happening at this base. People claim to have seen UFOs flying around the base and then landing nearby. Honestly, I don't even know what to believe anymore. Also, go ahead and Google it. Go ahead, try to find information about S4. What's out there is very scarce. So the government is doing a good job of keeping this base a secret. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the unnamed base. This is another base discovered by Google Earth. Again, had it not been for Google, this base might have still been a secret. So this base is located in Saudi Arabia and is another base the US government has not recognized yet. It's located deep in the Arabian desert, meaning the government really didn't want us to find it. If that's the case, then they need to have a word with Google Earth because they're just out there exposing them. Now, according to two former American intelligence officers, they thought the base was a drone center. So it could be a base for Predator and Reaper drones. There is an airstrip there, so that does make sense. But still, we don't know for sure. And you need to count how many times I say that in this video because it's true. Like, we don't know and it's freaky. Moving on to number four, we have the Wright Patterson Air Force Base. This base is said to be one of the most mysterious military bases in the US. During the Cold War, this base was where military scientists would reverse engineer Russian aircrafts. Even though the Cold War is over, the base is still in operation. They're now just moving on to other projects. What they're working on now remains a huge mystery. Some say they're building new spy planes there, or are reverse engineering foreign tech. We don't know, but rumor has it that this base is home to a lot of extraterrestrial activity. Conspiracy theorists think that this place is where scientists reverse engineer alien technology. That 
would be absolutely insane if that's true. So I hope it's not. Coming in at number three, we have Tolicha Peak Electronic Combat Range. Yeah, you heard me correctly. I've never heard of electronic combat until now, but this is the place where pilots get trained to deal with electronic warfare. In case of an attack, they know how to properly respond and fight back. Now, it's unknown how old this base has been around for, but it was found in images from the area dating back to 1984, so maybe around then or the 1970s. But the images were blurry, so they can't verify that for sure. And that's all we know about this base. It's so low key that it's actually nearly impossible to spot on a map. Again, even Google has barely any information out there for me. In our second spot, we have Harvey Point Defense Testing Activity Facility. That was a mouthful. Harvey Point is a military base owned by the Department of Defense. It's located near the city of Hartford in North Carolina. And apparently living near there is an absolute nightmare. People have described black helicopters constantly flying over at night. And they often see buses with blacked out windows traveling there. Not only that, someone said, and I quote, mysterious trucks haul in old limousines and haul out bullet riddled blackened ones. End of quote. Then there are the bombs. Apparently a lot of explosions go off there. Some residents wake up terrified by the noise. In fact, sometimes homes shake so much that they develop cracks. So this area is where they set off powerful explosions to apparently recreate terrorist attacks. They have been known to blow up cars, safes, I mean you get it. Retired Sheriff Julian Broughton said, and I quote, My son works there as security. But he doesn't tell me nothing, and I don't ask. Over the years, though, it has been revealed that it's also a training facility, basically spy school for the CIA, FBI, and SEALs. And in our number one spot today, we have Dulce Base. This one is the creepiest place on this list. So the small town of Dulce in New Mexico is said to have a secret underground facility where they do a number of crazy experiments. The first time someone mentioned this base was back in the 1930s. From there, the room Rumors skyrocketed. Now it's believed that there is a seven story compound beneath the city, and that's where there are human animal hybrids and human alien hybrids. Or that's where humans and aliens work together on mind control experiments. It's crazy. But those are just rumors. We're not even 100% sure if this base even exists or what. But guess what? This place is pretty close to Skinwalker Ranch. Coincidence? I think not. And there have been a number of UFO sightings in that area. Coincidence? All right, coming in at number 10, we have Pompeii. Pompeii is such a sad tale. As many of you are likely to know from history class, Pompeii was an ancient city near modern day Naples in the Campania region of Italy. The issue with Pompeii that it was built at the base of Mount Vesuvius, a volcano that spilled her fury in 79 AD. The city had been in existence for thousands of years before the eruption, and by the time of its demise, it was a thriving Roman hub. The eruption covered Pompeii in four to six meters of volcanic ash, burying the city but largely preserving a snapshot of Roman life. The lost city of Pompeii was rediscovered over a millennium and a half later and was excavated in the late 1800s. These days more and more of the city is being uncovered under the ash and pumice. The area draws in 2.5 million tourists now each year who delight in the macabre history of the Roman town. Indeed, it is possible to see ash covered corpses of bodies nearly 2,000 years old. Coming in at number 9, gone overnight, we have Chaohu. With a simple flick of an administrative wrist, the Chinese city of Chaohu disappeared overnight, which is pretty worrying. Can China just cancel cities these days? It seems so. Chaohu was a city of 4 million people and was known for housing a Han Dynasty tomb and a large freshwater lake. It seems that the Chinese government is pretty obsessed with economic statuses and statistics, and the reason that the city was effectively deleted was to adjust its borders, giving land to nearby cities to make them seem more profitable, which actually sounds kind of crazy, right? The worrying thing is though, is that there was absolutely no public consultation or official notice, and residents were only aware when they were told that they were living in new parts of old cities. So I live in Toronto, like I said, and I guess it's like waking up in Toronto and it no longer being a thing, and I'm told like, oh, you live in East Niagara now. I guess not a lot would change, but at the same time, everything would change. Weird. So weird. Okay, 
pinnacle of weird at number eight, we have Tored. Where is Tored? Is it a place or does it exist beyond our universe? We have talked a little bit about the man from Tored on Most Amazing a few times, but now I want to talk more about the country itself. But first, let me recap. In 1954, a man was detained at the Japanese border in Hanenda. This is in Japan, and he arrived on a plane from Europe. The man was affronted at the border control officer's questions. He claimed that he was on his third business trip to Japan that year. When he was searched, he had a wallet filled with a mixture of currencies, seeming to verify his business traveler status. When he presented his passport, officials were absolutely baffled and never seen a passport like this before. Asking where he was from, the man, who primarily spoke French, said he was from Tored. Sorry, where? Officers were absolutely baffled because, as you probably know, there is no such place. When he was asked to point to it on a map, he pointed somewhere in the locale of Andorra today. He then became confused and agitated that the map he was given didn't actually include Tored. So, was it real? Did it disappear or did he appear from another dimension? His passport looked legitimate, but he was from the mysterious country. His passport even had stamps in it, legitimate stamps, that seemed to actually cooperate with his story. He was also carrying a checkbook to a non-existent bank branch from Tored. So I guess my question is, even if the passport and checkbook were convincing fakes, how on earth would he even have been able to get on the plane in the first place? Passports are checked at multiple times when you go to an airport, including at check-in and before you're allowed to even board. I for one have like a deep feeling that Tored is real, but where did it go? Once again, I ask, is it in another dimension? Because I don't know. I think maybe I think that. Speaking of other dimensions, this is crazy at number seven. We have the Cloud City. This terrifying city in the sky appeared and disappeared within the space of a day. Chinese media went wild when thousands of residents who live in two different cities in the country spotted what looked like a huge floating city in the sky. Have a look and tell me what you think. Like, what on earth could that even be? The phenomenon was described as being a ghost city by onlookers who saw skyscrapers in the clouds. To me, I'm thinking this is another sign of a parallel universe or something. The phenomenon occurred in both Guangdong and Jiangxi, with some believing it was an alien city. The images were caught on camera for the world to see, so I have to say what on earth or above earth is going on. Even though it looks like a city in the clouds to you and me, apparently it's an optical illusion called Fata Morgana, which is a natural mirage. That being said, hundreds of people saw this disappearing cloud city, which to me makes me think that actually there might be more to it than simple mirage. A reappearing city up next, we have Villa Epicuen. Oh my goodness, wait until you see pictures from Villa Epicuen. Villa Epicuen was a tourist resort near Buenos Aires in Argentina, but unfortunately it flooded in 1985, meaning the whole town had to be abandoned. Disappearing into the water, Villa Epicuen became a sunken town lost to the perilous tides. However, strangely, the waters began to recede again in 2009, and now after a drought, you can see more more of the town emerging from the water than ever. 25 years after it disappeared, it began to re-emerge, only this time stripped of paint. The trees have died after their time away from the sun, leaving ghostly, chalky-looking twisted roots and leafless branches withering in the ground. Rusted cars and dislodged bathtubs litter the banks, but honestly, it actually looks kind of cool in like a ghostly, scary way. Coming in at number five, we have Angikuni Lake. This is a spooky Canadian urban legend set in the frozen north of Nunavut, one of Canada's largest and yet least populated territories. The conditions in the Arctic land are pretty terrifying at the best of times. The story goes that in the year 1930, a fur trapper, Joe LaBelle, needed to take shelter from a storm, so he decided to trek to a close-by Inuit village that he said he knew well. He'd been a few times in the past and called out a greeting ahead of his arrival, which was weirdly met with no response. When he arrived in the village, he found that its entire population had vanished. Stranger still, it appeared that inside the houses, food was still kept in stocks, and there were even some half-eaten meals on tables. It was as if everyone had fled at a moment's notice. LaBelle reported the incident to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Now, after months of investigation, they never found much of a trace of the residents. These days, the village can't be found at all, which has led many people to think that it simply never existed. 
Coming into number four, we have Ashley. The story goes that in August 1952, the small town of Ashley in Kansas, USA, disappeared following a magnitude 7.9 on the Richter scale earthquake. The earthquake was said to have taken place at 3.28 a.m., meaning the town's 679 residents were all in bed. The epicenter of the earthquake was none other than Ashley Town Center. Uh oh. Now, the urban legend says that when state law enforcement arrived at what should have been the outskirts of the farming community, they found a smoldering, burning crack in the earth, measuring 100 yards in length and approximately 500 yards in width. Back in the day when we did things in yards. The depth of the hole was never determined. Many people think that the story of the disappeared town is none other than a creepy pasta. Others say that there was indeed an earthquake on record in Kansas and that the town was lost, being too small to be on any maps in the first place. Honestly, I'm not sure. Coming into number three, we have the story of Juan Verde. This is a Brazilian ghost story. Or are the legends of the disappearance of Juan Verde real? The story goes that in 1923, a group of explorers came by the village of Juan Verde in the Brazilian jungle, supposedly a town of just 600 people. It seems that the explorers were shocked to find the town utterly deserted. They looked in houses and found things in a state of sudden disarray. Chairs knocked over, food still on tables, clothes still in cupboards, cars still in driveways. According to the story, police were called to the town and they found a cryptic clue. It seems that one of the townsfolk had left behind a gun that, on examination, seemed to have recently been fired. Aside the gun, there was a mysterious message that read, there is no salvation. Um. Some people think that the town was abandoned in order to avoid conflict with guerrilla militias, which were a problem at the time. Others think that the disappearance had something to do with religion. To this day, nobody knows. Coming into number two, we have the crazy story of the town on fire. Did you know that there is a legitimate abandoned town in Pennsylvania that is not only empty, but has been on fire for decades? Centralia was a thriving mining town in Columbia County with a population of a few thousand. These these days, just seven remain, clinging on to their doomed homes. It seems that all was well in Centralia for a very long time. It had been an active mine since the mid 1800s. Unfortunately, since 1962, it has been burning from the inside. It is suspected that the fire started from deliberate trash burning and could well keep burning for a further 250 years, which is absolutely insane. The residents first noticed the fire when smoke began billowing from the ground, accompanied by a foul smell of burning trash. Not only that, carbon monoxide was detected seeping from the ground. With temperatures hotter than the planet Mercury, it was decided that it was too dangerous to even try putting out the flames, and as a result, the town was evacuated slowly. But many people remained living there until 1981. That was when a 12-year-old boy fell into a sinkhole that suddenly opened up in his backyard. He survived by clinging onto a tree root, but from the hole came a plume of hot steam found to contain poisonous gas. That was it for the rest of the town. These days, the town is deserted, save from seven people who just won't leave. But once again, that fire still burns. Okay, are you ready for the saddest story that you'll hear today? Coming into number one, we have Ordor Suglane. This town was eradicated in one day at the merciless hands of the Nazis. During the German invasion of France in the Second World War, the village of Ordor Saglane was the subject of a bloody massacre. On June 10th, 1944, SS soldiers destroyed the village, killing 642 of its inhabitants. There was one sole survivor of the attack and 20 escapees. Now the SS invaded and rounded up men and shot them at point blank range in the barn, which actually may have been a better fate than that awarded to the women and children. They were rounded up into a church that was then set on fire by the German soldiers. You can imagine how that ended. Former French President Charles de Gaulle ordered that the town remain untouched as a memorial to those who lost their lives there. Cars lay in ruins, buildings are crumbling, and shops contain what was left of their stocks after the village was ransacked. Tourists can now visit the town remains and nearby memorial center. I'd actually love to go and pay my respects. It sounds creepy, but honestly, historically, really cool. I'd better watch out, though, because the ransacked town is said to be haunted. And, like, of course it is. Starting off this countdown, we have the NSA spy hubs. We all 
all know that the NSA is spying on us, okay? That's old news. I mean, in 2013, former contractor for the CIA, Edward Snowden, revealed that the NSA was collecting phone records of millions of Americans and spying on us through our phone calls. Well, it turns out they have multiple top secret bases. Half of them, we don't even know where they're located. We just know that they're out there. Somewhere. These spy hubs are often windowless skyscrapers. There are some in Atlanta, Dallas, Chicago, Los Angeles, New York City, San Francisco, Seattle, and of course, Washington DC. These buildings though, aren't regular buildings. No, no, of course not. They are highly secure and guarded. In fact, they are built to withstand terrorist attacks, nuclear attacks, and natural disasters. So not only do we not know where they're located, we don't know what they're doing in all of these hubs, besides spying on American citizens. So you better behave. They're watching. Always watching. <laughs> Moving on to number nine, we have Diego Garcia. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps us out. Diego Garcia is a US occupied small island in the Indian Ocean. Technically, it's an overseas territory of Great Britain. In 1966, the people on the island were employed as contract farmers. They were working on coconut plantations. But from 1968 to 1973, the farm workers were kicked off the island by the UK government so that the US slash UK military could have a joint base on the island. So in 1966, the United States was given the rights to use the island if they forgot about the 14 million debt that the UK owed them. Now the island is used by government officials and it's highly, highly guarded. In fact, rumor has it that the island is home to a secret prison. Rumor also has it that the Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 that went missing without a trace actually just landed on this island. Not only that, but apparently rumor has it that this base is used by the CIA to torture prisoners. There's some crazy theories out there. I hope one day we'll find out if any of them are true. Then in 2009, the US military evicted several thousand of the island's local residents. Why they did this is still so top secret. Like they don't know why they got evicted. I really wish we knew. Something fishy is going on over there. Coming in at number eight, we have the Dugway Proving Ground. Located in Utah, the Dugway Proving Ground is the main biological and chemical weapons testing site for the US Army. Like who knows how many and what kinds of dark deadly weapons they are building and testing there. The base also contains top secret US military research documents, which is one of the reasons why the government doesn't want you to know about it. Now, in 1968, the unbelievable happened at the base. On March 13th, a high-speed jet sprayed 320 gallons of nerve gas VX around the air in a test. This is so deadly that 10 milligrams can kill people. It'll stop your respiratory muscles from working and then you'll just choke to death. Anyways, it sprayed in an area near a farm. The next day, thousands of sheep were found dead. The government denied that this was their fault, but people aren't buying it. Either way, they paid the rancher who lost a sheep over $300,000 and tried to keep the situation hush hush. So the government definitely doesn't want us to know any of that, so, but I know it and I shared it with you. <laughs> Moving on to number seven, we have Camp Perry. Camp Perry, otherwise called The Farm, is a top secret training facility run by the CIA. The place is used to train CIA officers as well as officers working in the Defense Intelligence Agency. One of the reasons why this place is so secretive is because they don't want the identity of their top secret agents to be leaked. Because then, hello, they wouldn't be secret agents anymore, would they? Now, listen to just how intense this camp is. So former CIA officer Bill Wagner went to a three week interrogation course at the farm in 1970. He revealed that the people learning to be good interrogators practiced techniques such as sleep deprivation, mock execution, and would deliberately taint food which exposes that CIA interrogators use these techniques in real life. Of course, the US government has never formally acknowledged the existence of this camp. 
although many people know that it's real. Coming in at number six, we have Area 51. Of course, I had to put this one on the list. Hello, everyone wants to know what the heck is going on at that top secret base. Like, are the rumors true? Do they really have animals hiding there? Are they conducting unethical tests on humans? Area 51 is home to a number of conspiracy theories because it's so highly protected and secretive. Seriously, people have gotten killed for trying to even get close to the building. This has led a lot of people to believe that the military is up to something. What do you think goes on in Area 51? Let me know in the comments below. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Sherman Kent School for Intelligence Analysis. This is a training school in Reston, Virginia for CIA analysts. The school has been given the nickname The Vault because of how many locks and alarms and guards it has. So basically, the school opened in May of 2000 and it apparently teaches members many important things, such as foreign languages, regional studies, satellite image analysis, wiretap transcript analysis, and media report analysis. So basically, everything you think a spy would need to know. This place is basically spy school, which is super cool. Now, like all places on this list, this one is also heavily guarded. It is located on the second floor of a five story structure. The glass windows are smoked to prevent people from looking in and spying. The building also contains sensors to prevent eavesdropping from outside. And like I said, it's protected by a number of locks and alarms and surveillance. In our fourth spot, we have Menwith Hill. Menwith Hill is a Royal Air Force base located in the UK. In fact, it is said to be one of the most secretive places in the UK. First off, the place is super odd. Like, there's a bunch of white domes all over the place that look like giant golf balls. Like, I feel like it's just the government's own mini putt or golfing range or something like that, but it's not. This site is said to be the largest electronic monitoring system on the planet. So basically, it's a place where they spy on us, monitoring our every move. The site first opened to spy on the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Since then, we don't know exactly what they're spying on. But it's a vital part of the NSA surveillance network. In 2012, it was believed that the base was involved in a number of drone attacks. However, this has never been confirmed. On top of that, it was revealed that the NSA used the base to, and I quote, aid a significant number of capture kill operations. That is terrifying, wow. Moving on to number three, we have Kapustin Yar. Kapustin Yar is basically Russian's version of Area 51. It is a top secret base created by the USSR. It was used for developing the Soviet space program. But now, rumor has it that it is home to aliens. Apparently, people saw a large red sphere flying in the sky right above this base. Others claim to have seen three-eyed aliens wearing silver overalls there. I mean, hey, at least he's stylish. In fact, most alien sightings in Russia occur near this top secret base. Coincidence? I think not. It could be that aliens are trying to escape from this base or something like that. There's even rumors of this base being used to conduct alien autopsies. It's pretty creepy. I don't even want to know if I want to find out what goes on in there. In our second spot, we have the Secret Super Command Bunker. Apparently, the Pentagon is planning to build a secret command bunker 3,500 feet under Washington, D.C. What's the purpose of this bunker, you ask? Well, just in case of nuclear war, the bunker will keep people safe from the nukes. Apparently, the pandemic shook the U.S. government and now they, and I quote, put plans in place to ensure critical elements of the US government can keep functioning in the midst of an extreme crisis. So they're basically gonna be like, sick, every man for themselves, peace out, and then just disappear into this secret bunker. And in our number one spot, we have Porton Down. Close to Stonehenge, there's a place called Porton Down, which is basically a massive experimental testing center. It's known for working on chemical and biological weapons, as well as dealing with dangerous pathogens. The stuff that goes on in there is dark, and I mean dark. 
Starting in 1945, the government began testing nerve gas on real humans. These testings on humans went until 1989. In the end, more than 3,400 people had nerve gas tested on them. In 1953, a man named Ronald Madison died after being subjected to liquid nerve gas. Not only did they lie and say they were no longer testing the gas on humans, but they denied that the nerve gas was the cause of his death. Recently, however, it was discovered that they are now testing this gas and other dangerous weapons on animals. What else goes on in there is unknown. Like, what if they're still running unethical tests on humans? Mm -hmm.